What's up, gangsters? How about a little randoms? Okay, so finally, after six weeks, I can't believe it took me so long, I have uh, finished all of the pylons and weapons for my Ming 148 Super Hornet. And it's, yeah, I'm glad that I chose to do all this before I actually did any more work on the airframe because I don't know if I thought I had six more weeks to go just to get this done after I after finishing up with the airframe. I don't know. I would have made it, but I probably would have had to set it aside for a while and until uh, I recharged. Uh, but at any rate, this you know this actually has been kind of fun and um, you know more challenging uh, than I thought. Um, I mean, all of these little things are basically tiny little aircraft models in, in some way or another. I mean, like these gas tanks, you know, that's a fuselage with a seam that runs, you know, all the way around the top and the bottom where it splits in two. So you got to do your basic bodywork stuff there and all that. Same thing with the pylon. Um, it's got, you know, it's split into two halves. It's got a seam down the middle that hopefully you can't see anymore. Got a panel line that's got to get rescribed across that seam. So yeah, that's why I say these are like just little bitty aircraft models. There's just a bunch of them. So anyway, um, I'm pretty stoked about the way the gas tanks turned out. Um, I wanted to make them pretty beat up because that was really that is really common with these fuel tanks. I mean, you'll see some that that are great that have been freshly repainted and they're just all monochrome gray. And then you see some that are just absolutely beat to shit, and those are the ones that I wanted. But what I'm really trying to do is create a variety of of states of destruction, if you will, and a variety of gray tones. So when I went into this, I kind of had a mission of making nothing. No two components have the same color of gray, uh, at least if they were assembled you know, next to each other. So like with this one, what I've done is kind of created a pylon that I've, I'm depicting as basically being brand new, or at least with fresh paint, on a tank that is pretty beat up. Not as beat up as it could be, but pretty beat up. And so what I did with the tank is um, it's got a, a lot of corrosion control patches on it where I've just freehand sprayed. Um, you know, you can see different tones of, of gray there. Um, and then I also put the uh, decals on it that uh, indicate where the, like the, I guess, where the wear strips for the cradles that these sit in go. You don't see them on all, all these tanks, but sometimes you do. So I put them directly on the paint, as always, then sanded them down to give them some wear and tear, and uh, and then uh, put all of that under uh, some uh, MRP Super Matte Clear to give me a nice flat surface to do some oil work on, and that's what you've got going on there. That's just a mix of Windsor and Newton black and raw umber to give me, you know, some pretty characteristic grime stains that you get and then also to kind of give some subtle staining around the areas where the pylon gets handled and on the bottom i'm pretty stoked with the way that came out this other tank i decided to make even way more beat up uh, darker color this is the one that'll go on the center line i also um, put um, some decals on this one a lot of the uh, vfa 27 tanks have the mace logo on them and that's a decal and some numbers that came off of the afterburner sheet again super super good decals really nice and thin they behaved really well um, by just putting them on with a little bit of mr mark setter um, and then um, uh, going directly with um, MRP super clear matte over the top of them did a pretty good job of hiding the film. I did a little bit of sanding, but not much because um, the film is, again, just super, super thin. And what I did there was then I put some tape around it and sprayed a pattern to make it look like it was like a big stencil or maybe a big vinyl mask that somebody used to spray a brand new uh, set of markings on a tank that's pretty beat up. 
after they sprayed a patch of lighter corrosion control paint on there. So hopefully that tells the story pretty well. Um, I like the variety. Uh, then I've got the, uh, the missiles and the missile rails, and I've done them uh, two completely different ones. This one that's gonna be empty, I uh, tried to do kind of based on a reference photo that I saw that just was really grubby and had a bunch of different colors of paint on it. This thing was a giant pain in the ass though, because it is two separate halves, and there's a seam that runs right down the middle of it in that little trough there that was a real bitch to get, uh, to get hidden effectively. I spent way too much time on that. Then there's the other one, which I'm depicting as a newer rail, and then, um, you know, a missile, which is pretty new. These, you know, these are the uh, kit decals from Ming, and they're pretty good. They're a little thicker than the ones from Afterburner, and I had a little bit of trouble getting them to, to lay down and get hidden, but overall, not too bad. Pretty nice detail. Um, one thing, though, that was a real pain in the ass was if you look, you can see clearly that the cone, that the nose cone, uh, not a great fit, but it is a clear part. And I don't think I've got the, uh, the sprue of them. But anyway, that whole nose cone is a clear part, which is kind of, come on, focus up, it is kind of a pain in the ass because only the very tip of that warhead is a clear seeker head. So how do you mask that off? What I ended up doing was I measured it and discovered that a 1.3 millimeter diameter piece of brass tubing would fit over the end of the plastic piece far enough, or the clear piece far enough to basically mask off what needed to be clear. And the challenge was just holding it on there while I did that. And I actually figured out a way to do that and sprayed it and it worked out pretty good. So I'm really pretty happy with the way that missile looks. Um, that clear seeker head is a nice little detail. Okay, so then moving on to some of the other racks, okay. So uh, the outside racks, all right. Uh, on one of them I've got this AIM 120. Okay, I guess I gotta take this phone call. Okay, so anyway, uh, yeah, the AIM-120 on this rail, on this rack, this is on the outboard station. Uh, this is gonna be on station 10. And uh, again, same thing with the kit decals, you know, went on pretty good. Kinda wanted to pick a new missile and a new-ish rail, and then a, a, a pylon that has seen some repaint and some staining. And that staining is, again, the same uh, oil mix that I used for the gas bags, all right. Um, I'll get to the other outside pylon in a minute. Uh, let's see, this is the FLIR unit, again, with the kit decals. I had some trouble with these, though. Just proof that the same decals from the same sheet will not always behave the same. I treated these decals exactly the same as I did everything else, and one of them just would not cooperate. It, I, it just, it wasn't silvering, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't uh, go down properly on the edge, and it was like, looked kind of like frayed white uh, material, uh, and even extra thin wouldn't dissolve it and make it lay down. So I ended up just sanding it off and spraying some corrosion control spots on <laughs> where it was supposed to be. So that's a nice thing about doing everything in that condition. You've always got that escape clause. Anyway, um, uh, all right, so two of the inside pylons. Uh, well, let me talk about the outside pylons first because I think I've told you guys about my, um, about my little GBU-54s that I designed in Fusion 360 and 3D printed. It's a little assembly of three pieces. That's the tail, the bomb itself, and then the seeker head. And I'm really stoked with the way these came out. The, uh, there's a few things that I would do differently in terms of the design of the parts to make them a little bit easier to paint. Because you can see, you've got these band clamps that go around them, and then you've got this conduit that runs underneath the center of the bomb where it goes all the way from the tail to the nose. 
And there's places where that was hard to paint because it didn't stick up far enough. And I just kind of did my best because by the time I got to it, I was way too far down the road to, to modify the design and, and reprint the parts. But I'm pretty happy with it. The, uh, you know, one of the questions that I got from some of the SMC, SM, SMC, SMCG guys <laughs> is, would these bombs really be that beat up? So the deal is, yes, maybe. I've got reference photos that show that. The GBU-54 is basically a Mark 82 iron bomb casing. And the GBU-54 is the upgrade from the GBU-31. It's a 500-pound bomb. And the GBU-31 was a GPS guy, is a GPS guided bomb. We still use it. But it's going to get superseded by the GBU-54, which is laser guided via this seeker head. And all that being said, the bomb casings themselves are obviously iron, steel, and they seem to rust a lot, especially in salt air. And this nubbly coating is a thermal protective barrier that the Navy puts on there so that the bombs can't get too hot in case of a fire and go cooking off in the, uh, in the, in the uh, arsenal, because that's a bad thing, right? So it's kind of a nubbly coating, and I created that using some Mr. Surfacer 500 and some really thick, goopy lacquer primer that I just stippled on. And I'm really happy with the way that came out. It was hard to do, but once I came at it with some enamel washes, which basically was just three different colors of, of Tamiya Paneline wash, it really showed that texture well. The uh, overall color tone of them is a little bit yellow, but... This project seems to be kind of going in the dramatic direction, so that's fine. I wanted to show good contrast between all the different parts of the bomb, so having it be a little bit too yellow wasn't too big of a penalty, especially once I came back with all these brown tones, which reflect the rust, uh, you know, kind of leaching through that thermal coating, which seems to be, again, it's a thing. And yeah, you'll see, you know, a lot of bombs that are perfectly, you know, gray, and show none of that, and then you'll see some that are just really bad. Um, this bad, eh, you know, maybe not quite this bad, but again, I'm kind of going for the kind of going for the drama, and I think it looks pretty cool. This again is the uh, the GBU 57 rack, and again, that's a mistake. I talked about that in the last video about this. It's supposed to be a GBU 55, but again, I didn't figure that out until somebody pointed it out on the last video or maybe the one before that, and it was just too late to change it. And, you know, look, I'm like, okay, fine. I don't know why the Navy uses the 55 as opposed to the 57, but maybe in 2032, you know, the services have decided to, uh, you know, aggregate to a single <laughs> bomb sled. I don't know. Anyway, looks cool. Not changing it. Uh, it was a lot of work, and I'm happy with the way it turned out, especially these cutouts on the tops of the bombs. Uh, painting in there was something that I dreaded, but I was even able to kind of get the yellow stripes that go around the nose of those to look okay. And I just painted those by hand with some Liquitex acrylic ink. Even got a little bit of zinc chromate primer showing through on the nose of the, of the sled. So pretty happy with the way that the bombs and, the, and all that came out. Okay, the last thing is going to be a little mini review of the uh, of the GBU 53Bs from Edward. This brass and stuff that I that I talked about. That's what is all up on these other pylons, and holy shit, they were a lot of work. <laughs> The, uh, the pylons, again, just carrying on with the weathering. Somebody asked me about the black chipping. Yeah, definitely a thing. You'll see that a lot. I guess that's just some kind of black primer that, that they use. But again, you know, same thing with the, with the worn out uh, pylons with the repaints. The sleds, I wanted to be, um, you know, kind of dirty, but not really worn out. This one ended up with a corrosion control patch on it because of a super glue fingerprint that I had to sand off. <laughs> so again, always good to have that escape clause. Anyway, these little bomblets, yeah, you can see uh, they, they were a lot of work. I mean, the overall color is just this light gray. 
The wings are a different color. I just hand painted that with some Vallejo metal color. Um, then the tail fins, which actually pop out of slots, are kind of black. And there's different versions that you'll see when you do look at the reference photos for these GBU 53Bs. They're brand new, so there's not a lot of information out there. Um, and so I just kind of went with it, um, you know, and I feel like it looks good, so um, I'm, I'm happy. But, uh, you know, you'll see some of them that make it look like the where these little winglets are black. Uh, there's just there's different different pictures, so I just kind of had to pick something. The other thing is the seeker heads. Um, they uh, on some pictures you'll see where they uh, have a kind of uh, a glass dome with a sort of a uh, sort of an iridescent rainbow looking um, uh, coating on them. Um, kind of like iridium sunglasses, and that I you know didn't know, didn't have any way to do that. But then you'll see some other reference photos that show that where they have like a chrome coating on them. So that I went with because you'll see there's a panel line going around that clear part, and I had no idea how I was going to mask and paint because behind the panel line is supposed to be silver. It's a silver band between the gray body of the bomb and the clear seeker head. But some of them show that entire thing as being chrome, so I went with that because that was relatively easy to do. I just sprayed some um, uh, AK-477 chrome directly on the clear parts, and because that was super smooth, it gave a pretty nice chrome effect. And then I put a little bit of uh, aqua gloss, magic wash, over it, to emphasize that little panel line and provide some protection. But as you can see, it's still super fragile. And even the minimal handling that I've had to do has given me a couple of, of little tiny chips. You can see there, um, I don't know that I'm gonna fix that. It's just, I'm over it. <laughs> um, especially because these things were a shit ton of work, but that was compounded by the fact that there were problems with the fit. Um, I talked about it in the last video, I think. Um, the decals, pretty good little decals. Good on Edward for those. But the deal is that you can see, okay, that there is, there's these lugs uh, uh, that are molded into the top of the bomb. And those are super realistic. That's what they actually look like. And they are supposed to go into these rectangular notches, okay? So the first problem I ran into was that the spacing between the lugs didn't match the spacing on the notches, didn't fit at all. And so I just had to chop off the, the lug on the back. And I thought, okay, that'll take care of it. Well, yeah, not so much. Because then the next thing I discovered was that the lugs were too big for the notches themselves, wouldn't go in. And then after I mounted the rear bombs, okay, got the back ones all on there and kind of got them in the right orientation, you'll notice that there's a tapered gap in between them. That's correct. They, they kind of want to kind of want to uh, sort of fall in there such that the edges of those two wings are edge to edge. But that's not right, because if you look, you'll see that those wings are tapered. There's about a millimeter difference between the front and the back. And, you know, these bombs are not super straight, but hey, it is what it is. You'll also see, and this is the next problem, the bombs are not all the same length. Like, look at that one on the top of the view compared to the one on the bottom. The one on the bottom is distinctly shorter. So what happened when I went to mount the front ones and use that front lug in the rectangular notch, they were too big. They wouldn't, they wouldn't go on because the tail end of the bomb, of the front bomb, bumped into the nose of the back bomb. <laughs> Super aggravating. And so what I ended up having to do after all of this painting and, and panel lining and everything on these silly little things, I had to go and chop the front lug off of all four of the front bombs and drill and pin it so that it would in fact go on correctly and be strong. It was just, 
just a giant pain in the ass and it's really annoying that uh, you know that with this fit stuff it just feels like Edward is just still not doing good quality control and good design yeah I mean it's great that they can do such phenomenal detail work I mean the you know the panel lines and the and the fasteners and everything on the on the sled and the bombs themselves is just really really good but that's still no fun if the parts don't fit properly and and you just you know it's just like I, I you know my experience with these bombs that I designed myself you really have to pay attention to the tolerances that are allowable by the manufacturing process if you want this shit to go together properly I had to make four or five adjustments on these bombs before I was happy with the way that they fit together and the sizing. The original uh, bombs that I built, I think I showed you guys this before, were too big. And the connector on the top of the bomb tail right there was about two millimeters away from landing underneath that resin cable coming out of the back of the sled. And I had to make some adjustments. And, you know, that's just part of the engineering of stuff like this. And, you know, I know I harp on it a lot and it's, you know, my stuff isn't perfect, but I just feel like that some of these companies that produce these aftermarket parts really are not paying attention to, uh, to that level of detail. So, but anyway, it's all done. This is all good. Um, I, I don't think I had much choice on these GBU 53Bs because I don't think anybody else makes them. And again, Love the detail. Instructions are good. They're simple. The uh, decals are nice. You know, the, the paint scheme is just one of the, of the ones that I see in reference photos. Um, but again, fit matters. Because at that point, <laughs> when you're farting around with something like this and you got to do eight of them, it just stops being fun at, at, at a certain point if the fit's not right. So anyway, that's that's all of that. Now what I'm going to do is uh, this thing may end up being in a magazine article and I wanted to make it easy to do some good photography. <laughs> so I blew some time making this little rack, um, kind of a modular thing that's got magnets in it that'll made up with the magnets Got a magnet on the bottom so that it'll stick to a one, two, three block. And um, it'll enable me to hang uh, all of this stuff on here uh, so that I can do some, uh, some photography. Um, and it'll make it look cool and be easy to do. So there's... Put that one over here on this side. Hopefully I got all my magnets oriented properly. That's one thing that you find when you start, when you start jerking around with magnets, <laughs> you find out pretty quickly that the polarity of the magnets is everything. Um, and if you get the magnets switched around the wrong way, you will have a disaster. If the magnet polarity is correct, it's all fun because they just like that. They just snap to and hang exactly where they're supposed to and you're all good. But one of my pylons has the magnet facing the wrong direction. <laughs> and I took care to get it marked. Uh, I thought it was this one, but maybe not. I don't know. Hopefully it'll all work out. You can tell when it won't stick because the magnet there pushes it away rather than just grab onto it immediately. So... There, that one sticks there. So let's see if this one will stick. I know they all stick. There it goes. I know they all stick where they're supposed to on the on the Hornet. So that's all that matters. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's ridiculous, but kind of fun. 